Languages change over time. But you already know that much if you've gone through my intro to language history. You've seen how an individual word changes as it passes from a proto-language into related daughter languages, where it transforms into distinct words called cognates. The differences between cognates show up most noticeably in the way the words sound. We were able to use these differences to spot sound correspondences that mark cognates in their related languages, but also to recognize the sound changes that separate the daughter languages from their common parent. In this series, we'll take a closer look at the types of sound change that shape the history of languages and language families all around the world, foreign and familiar alike. Historical linguistics often split sound change into two halves, regular changes versus irregular changes. A regular sound change takes place systematically and in every instance of an environment. For example, if a language undergoes a sound change where er becomes pronounced l, every er will change to u. If in that same language, m turns into m between a vowel and a b, then every m found after a vowel and before a b will undergo that sound change. Early in the 20th century, the regularity hypothesis proposed that all sound change naturally works this way. Irregular sound changes are quirky in nature. They're actually known as sporadic sound changes because the sound change doesn't occur routinely in a given environment. Let's take an example from English. Some older dialects of English pronounce the word for a male fox, fox, and the word for a female of the species, fixin. In other dialects, the two words started with a v. Thanks to dialect mixing, Modern English speakers inherited a bit of both, leaving us with fox and vixen. The change from Germanic f to modern English v in vixen is sporadic, since it doesn't match up with any regular across-the-board sound change in modern English. To understand sporadic sound change, we'd really need to look into the features of local dialects and regional language patterns. That's at least the case in the fox-vixen example I gave, where the two words descend from two different dialects. We aren't going to attempt to uncover the background behind that kind of sound change here. Instead, the topic of regular sound change will be the order of the day. This series will look at the various types of regular pronunciation change that are common to languages around the world, be they foreign languages like Japanese and Arabic or native ones like English. We'll also see how these changes very often make combinations of sounds easier to pronounce. In other words, one of the key motivations for speakers to change a sound is ease of articulation. For any viewers who aren't yet familiar with language change in reconstructed languages, I'll leave you with another link to that series. Also, since we're going to focus on the change part of sound change, you'll need a basic understanding of sounds. If that's where you're at, check out this video series first. In the next video, it's on to the various processes of sound change, starting with assimilation. Thanks for watching.